Amen. Love you, man. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful morning, huh? Amen. The birds were out. No, they weren't, but amen. They were almost out, huh? Amen. Oh, yeah, and all the little ones. Go to class, all the children, please. You guys get to escape. You don't have to listen to me saying, yeah. We don't have to listen to him. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate you guys having me and my wife and a wonderful little family out here once again. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. He's keeping us busy. He's keeping us going. Amen. Amen. There's nothing greater than to do the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You see the testimonies manifest among you. You see, people come to the amazing salvation of God. I mean, through the blood of Christ. I mean, you see the demonic power be, far, just flee. You know what I mean? It's, it's been a powerful journey, and it's only going to get gooder. Amen. You guys, that's why you guys say it up here in Brighton, gooder. So I'm trying to remember how to say it. No. Amen. Praise God. Let's open up our Bibles to Romans chapter 1. Praise you, Lord. And then thank God for Pastor Leon and Desiree up here in the leadership. Amen. I remember we had Pastor Leon and Sister Des there in our youth as leaders, watching your pastor go through the battle there, you know. When God calls you into the ministry, there's a place of fire. He puts you in the fire, man, and it doesn't feel good, you know. Amen. Many, many run from that fire. Many will sit in the pew, but not do as God has called them to do because they're afraid of the fire. You get the fire hurts. It burns out every contamination because the Holy Spirit is here to consecrate, separate. Amen. He brings supplication and separation to a heart. Amen. To where you cry out. Help me, Lord. And I seen this man of God, this woman of God going through that a few years ago. And our pastor used to tell me behind the back and behind the scenes, he'd say, man, that, that guy's going to be a pastor, him and his wife, one of these days. Amen. Uh, and then you get to thinking, and I was like, wow, really? Amen. <laughs> you only see the outside, but you don't see the inside. He would sit there with his head down, going through a battle. Amen. Let God fight your battle. Let Him fight your battle. Get out of the way, man. Let Him get in the driver's seat. Let Him be in control. Amen. It's much easier that way. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Hey. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jews first, and also to the Greeks. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Heavenly Father, I praise you, Lord God, for this meeting. For your spirit that is here, Lord. <laughs> ah, the little ones that always disturb me, Father. Man, Lord, whatever you're doing, Lord God, I give it on to you, Lord. Father, for we are not ashamed of this great gospel. We are not ashamed of what you have given us, Lord God. For we go out, Lord God, proclaiming your name, Lord Jesus. For you are our salvation. You are our great, great Savior, Lord God. Our great Shepherd, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost that you have given us to live inside of us, Father. To magnify your kingdom, Lord God, here on this earth, Lord. We thank you and we praise you for this morning, Lord God, and this evening, Father. Bring those souls in, Father, that are broken that are wretched, Lord God, that are lost, Lord. 
Father, I thank you, Lord, for saving us with your amazing love. In your mighty name, Jesus, amen. You, amen. Usually you're standing. I was going to say, you may be seated. <laughs> the Lord had been dealing with me. He gave me this word last week. I was teaching the women's home there at the Center of Hope. But when one has been touched, hallelujah. Ha. When one has been touched, brother, as I have been touched by God, you have been touched by God, but when one has been touched, brother, by the living word, by the Holy Spirit, there's no denying it, bro. There is no denying it. When one has lived a wretched life, a sinful life, a life that denied Christ all over them, a life that ran from the call of God every day, a life that wasn't convinced by even his very attributes of mercy and loving kindness. Brother, but when you've been touched, mm, you know without a doubt. There's no going back when you've been touched. Yes, the battles get hard, church. Come on, this is a man that knows what the battles are like. The Apostle Paul, he knows what it's like to fight the flesh. But he also knows how to put his hands and his whole entire being into the grace of God. He also knows how to surround himself by the mercy of God. He also knows how to get in there privately with the Spirit of God. When you've been touched, there's no doubt you've been touched. Because there's no returning to that world. Amen. Amen. To go back to the ungodly and slither back into darkness. Because when you've been touched, you know the hand of God is upon your life. There's no doubt. Come on. There's no doubt. There's a fire that glows within you. A desire to serve Him with all of your heart, all of your strength, and all of your mind. Because that's what He says. Love me with all of your heart, with all of your strength, and with all of your mind. And when you've been touched by the glory of God, you can't just run from it. You might get a little kicked up, a little buffeted up, a little taken down sometimes. But there's a time where he sticks out his hand, young man, and he says, get right up. Come on. I haven't lost sight of you. You haven't lost the battle. You haven't lost the battle. And he asks us not to give up. When we walk in this walk, it's hard. I know it is. I'm only 12 years old in it. Going on 13 pretty soon. But it gets hard. There are many temptations out there. Many desires out there. Many things that the flesh want to give on to. Come on. There are many things that want to come against the body of Christ. And they may seem good. They may seem, un, un, you know, very pleasant sometimes. And then they gratify the flesh. They like to tease the flesh. They like to come in and play with the flesh. Come on. But he says, do not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Let this pass. Power live inside of you. Let it, amen, manifest among you. Let it be something genuine. Come on, amen. We need a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, a church needs to be on fire to be called the church of Christ. Amen. He's coming back for nothing less than what he's left at Pentecost. And that spirit-filled, blood-believing, come on, blood-washed people. He's coming back for those, amen, who desire to be in his presence. And stay in the night. The world may rush in, brother, but I, I ain't giving into that world, bro. 
Amen. It may come in and it may put me, amen, on my knees sometimes, but it ain't going to crush me, brother. Come on. It ain't going to leave me abandoned because God doesn't leave me abandoned. Come on. He's always there at the right time, in the right moment, amen, for those days. I need him. And when one's been washed, they know they've been washed, brother. They don't smell like the world no more. Come on. Oh, they don't smell like the world no more. There's a fragrance that comes from God the Father. There's a fragrance that comes from you being hid away in His mercy seat. Come on. There's a fragrance there. And He begins to fill us with His fragrance. We become a separated people, a peculiar people, somebody indifferent to the world. That's all right, because I'm unashamed. Come on. Amen. The world hey, has been conquered by Christ Jesus, and I'm right there with him. I'm, on, I'm not ashamed of Christ. You guys went to I hop and preach the Lord Jesus Christ unashamed. Come on. Right. We got to get out of our little boxes. We got to get out of our little pity parties. We got to get out of our little wants and desires from this world. And we got to be unashamed. Come on. Of the gospel. It is what brings salvation. It is what puts amen, a person into heaven. It is what brings a person out of hell. It is what brings one amen, to the full knowledge of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Hey, we got to be unashamed of what God has done for us at Calvary's Hill through the blood of Jesus Christ. We got to be unashamed. He died for me there, brother. Man, when I couldn't even find the restroom. Come on. All peed on, all tore up. Amen. He died for me there, brother. Amen. When I would wake up near the commode, all sick and vomiting from the hangover, he died for me, brother. When I was all stir crazy, lost on crack cocaine, amen, he died for me, brother. When I was all bound and tied up, twisted up by methamphetamines, he died for me, brother. Come on. Amen. And he's died for you. We're lost, brother. He never gave up on us. He's never been ashamed of us. Oh, he takes the worst of the worst, brother. Oh, he just doesn't blow us off. He creates a fire inside of that man. A fire inside of that woman. He brings something, amen, that is visible to the world. This one has been with Christ Jesus. Oh, this one has been with Christ Jesus. The world will recognize it. This one has been with Christ Jesus. This one's from that Pentecostal church. This one's is from them uh, that are all about the tongue talking. This one's uh, all, all about that spirit walking. This one's all about God's glory. These are those devil chasers. Come on. They came to terrorize the devil. Ah, come on, God going to deal with us this morning. Come on, it's time to come out of that, that box of ours. Amen. That religiosity, come on. Amen, as long as I go to the church, I'm good. Come on, that never worked for me. Amen. I went back to my sin, brother. But when you become unashamed, bro, when you become a living word because he lives inside of you, when you become a disciple of Christ, brother, there's nowhere but to go to the world and say, Jesus is my Savior. Jesus has washed me and cleansed me. Jesus is my sacrifice. He's the very Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. My Jesus. He's my Jesus. And he could be yours too. He could be all yours too. Oh, there's no doubt when a man's been forgiven. Oh, when he's been forgiven much, he's going to love much. Oh, come on. Yeah, I've been forgiven much. Come on. Amen. That day when I woke up in that jail cell, many of you have heard this, amen. And I looked at myself and I said, man, what a bad, what a man could do to his mother. And in knowing that I'd kill my mother, brother, in the drinking and drunken, al alcoholic driving kind of accident. And I looked at myself and said, how can I ever forgive myself? Amen. But God looked down with mercy. God looked down with grace. God looked down with love in his heart. And he says, I can forgive you. Just forgive yourself. 
You can tell when a man or woman has been forgiven by Christ because they're all about Christ. They love Christ. For those who are forgiven much, love much. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I run to him open arms, brother, for what he's done in my life. Amen. What man couldn't do, my young brother. What man couldn't do. I try to wash it away with Budweiser beer. I try to smoke it away with IndyCar. Amen. And some chronic. Hey, it never went away. Come on, puff that magic dragon. It was still there. Come on, I try to get it away and take it away through self-mutilation. Come on, I try to run to suicide. But suicide, it was still there. But when I cried out to Jesus, when I cried out to my Savior, when I cried out, amen, to the one who wrote this gospel, who wrote Walk this gospel. Who is this gospel? Come on. He came down and saved my life. He didn't have to go through. Amen. Him and him to save me. He came down directly to save me. Come on. I was stained. I was confused. I was full of darkness and abuse. Come on. He looks past all that church. Come on. There's a lost harvest out there. Amen. That is stained. That are lost. That are in need of Christ. He looks past it. Amen. This is the love and mercy of God. While we were yet sinners, He died for us, brother. When we were without strength, yet He died for us. Come on. When we were enemies, amen, He died for us. To reconcile us back to God the Father. Come on. What a great news this is. Come on. Yeah, you could walk in here flooded full of darkness, flooded full of sin. And He would still be here with open arms for you. Come on. Amen. He no respect to a person. You could come in here with a bad attitude, with a stinking attitude, and he'll still forgive you and open his arms to you. Come on. You could come in here in bondage and chain. Amen. Jacked up with the internet pornography. Amen. All messed up in, in shame. And he'll still forgive you. Come on. Amen. If there's a cry of repentance, he's willing to forgive. He's willing to forgive. Brother, tell me to slow down. I right away put it in. The Lord, no. The Lord right away puts it in overdrive. Come on. Amen. Chapter 1. Now go to Mark. Mark, Mark. Chapter 1, eh? Come on. Amen. Jesus is not ashamed of us. Come on. The devil will make you think he's ashamed of you. Oh, yeah. The devil will come and say, look how filthy you are, young man. Look how filthy you are, young woman. Look, do you think God's going to forgive you for what you did last night? It's still written all over you. And God says, yes, I have. Amen. 2,000 years ago at Calvary. Come on. We lose the battle because of our ignorance. We don't fight because of our laziness. Come on. Unashamed. Come on, don't be ashamed of this gospel. Oh, when it gets to living inside of you. It washes you. It delivers you. It sets you free. Now you can run, brother. Now you can run. Now you can go tell your primo, your prima. Now you can tell the whole world what it's done for you. Amen. There's no more Ziploc on your mouth. Amen. There's no more muteness. Mm, mm. Amen. You've been set free. Now they can't shut you up. Amen. They thought you were loud when you were drunk. Now you're under the Holy Ghost. Now you're all under the Holy Ghost. Come on. You can't shut up a man or a woman under the Holy Ghost. Come on. They stay rolling on the carpet for hours. Come on. Amen. Going into Los Lunas. Amen. We go preach down for Sister Lori and Brother Brother Santana. And that's Sister Lori, man. She get to giggling under the Holy Spirit. You can't shut her up. Come on. She's just laughing and laughing. And then she touched someone else and they start laughing. And then that hey, big old circle of a bunch of laughters. Yeah, yeah. Now that's the power of God. Yeah. Come on, you think the dentist came in and set some laughing gas right there. Hey, Amen. It's the power and the Spirit of God moving through these people. 
Some of us haven't laughed for years. Some of us haven't had the joy for years. Amen. Become unashamed to the gospel. Get into the gospel. Let it live inside of you. Amen. This is our very word. This is our bread. This is our source. This is our everything. This is what keeps us alive on this planet today, brother. Without this word, amen. We are like blind leading the blind. But now that I got the word, I got the light of Christ that brings life to me. Come on. I have the the gospel living inside of me. We need more of it. Come on. In verse 15. I believe that's where I'm going. Oh, chapter 2. Never mind, chapter 2. Amen, I was going to read about that one, but let's go to verse 15. Watch, and he went forth. Chapter 2 of Mark. Amen, verse 15. And now it happened, as he was dining with Le in Levi's house, the tax collector, that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples. For they were many, not just a few. And they followed him. And when the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners. Amen. They said to his disciples, how is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? How is it? Remember, remember we were so holy that we wouldn't even touch them because they're a sinner. God bless you, brother. Remember those days? Come on, I don't know about you, but there was a time when we were growing up in Christ that we were fearful of even the sinner coming and contaminating us. We were a trip, man. I don't know about you, but you smoke the most lousy junk out there too. The Mexican weed full of stems and seeds. It didn't bug you. But all of a sudden, you feel like you've been washed, forgiven, delivered by God. Now you can't even talk to a sinner about Christ. Because we might get contaminated. Come on. We're a trip that way, church. Come on. Oh, I ain't inviting them over. All they do is talk about the world. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying go hang out with them. Amen. You're a temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you must be separated. But there's a dying world out there that needs spirit-filled believers. Amen. People, amen, who are unashamed to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. He came to save the lost. We're living in a church hour where people are so afraid to go out to this world. So afraid to share the good news. So afraid to come out. It's like they're in the closet and they're afraid to come out of the closet. Back in the 80s, that was a big stink about the, the gay men and women coming out of the closet. Oh, you came out. <laughs> Pastor Ray made a shirt the other day. And then that says, I'm a Christian. I've come out. Uh, I didn't buy one, but yeah. <laughs> it kind of looked a little weird, but yeah. Oh, I'll go and get one for your pastor, but he probably wouldn't wear it either. <laughs> kind of doesn't get the message across, but in the worldly way. I found Jesus now. Amen. <laughs> but, but, but we're like that in the house of God. Amen. We're ashamed to pray among the world. Come on. We go to a restaurant and we, 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 we're afraid to, we're ashamed to pray. We're ashamed to tell the teller at Walmart, at Kmart, at the supermarket, God bless you, knowing that she's going or he's going through a bad day. And if you would just open that mouth of yours and let that gospel reach out and touch them, it might change their day. The boss, amen, take it to your work. Whether they accept it or not, my wife right away, oof, amen, she's tried it. 
she going to just keep on doing it. We got to be unashamed. We got to get crazy about this Lord Jesus who saved us. Come on. If he's forgiven you much, amen, you're going to love much. Come on. Lift up that voice and give him a praise today. Come on. Mm. Imagine coming to church this morning and preach a message. Mm -hmm. You guys, I was so fearful to come out here. You guys have to put me on video. And yet you only see us this back. No. He says, go out. Go out. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. It's the power unto God. I mean, this brings power, brother. But we got to step out by faith. He'll give you that measure of faith to go out there and do it. He'll always bring you somebody in your path. Come on. You know it. You know it. He, the Lord Jesus, bring somebody into my path that I may minister. And then we forget about it when that person's right there in our path. We kind of just get ashamed by it. We don't want to speak out because we're afraid to hurt their little feelings. Well, let me tell you, it hurt God's feelings when he seen his son going to the cross of Calvary for yours and my sin. It kind of put a, a damper on him. Come on. It grieved him when he created man and man and then influenced by the evil and the wickedness of the imagination of his own heart turned from God. It hurt him too. It's time to get unashamed, brother. And here he is. He's sitting among the most wicked sinners. That's how the Amplified Amen says it here. Amen. He says the most wicked sinners. They were notorious. Especially wicked. He was eating and drinking with the, the most notorious sinners. And when he heard what the Pharisees were saying, come on, how can Pastor Leon hang around with that guy? He's just a sinner. Amen, how can you, amen, be, he's just a sinner. Amen. Yeah, we may not see him change. It took me 34 years from my mother's womb exit. Yeah, amen, up to 34 years of life before I changed. Come on. It took a lot of battles for my mom to go through, for my daddy to go through, for Christ to go through, and then not so much him, but for me to go through to see myself standing in his arms and giving him all the praise and glory. It took years, amen. And so it might take them years also, but we should not be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of the testimony Christ laid inside your heart. Shout it out. Let everybody know what he's brought you from. Amen. I I've been molested at eight years old. I've been incarcerated at 13. Come on. I'm not ashamed of it. I know what God brought me from. I know the chains he's broken. I know the bondage he's, he's pulled me out of. Brother, I'm not ashamed. Smoked for 27 years. That old cancer stick. He took it just like that. I'm not ashamed. Drank all the Budweiser beer, brother, till the bar was closed. Hey, Amen. Pee all over myself. Barf all over myself. I am not ashamed. Come on. Panhandled on the streets of Seattle, Washington. Come on. For food, for drugs, for whatever. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Because I know where he's brought me from. And it's been a genuine brought. It's been something genuine in my heart. Amen. I have no time to go back to that world and get silly as the world is. I only have time to tell people about what God has done in my life through the gospel that he's put inside of me. Unashamed, brother. And he sits there. And when Jesus heard it, verse 17, he said unto them, those who, who are strong and well are in no need of a physician. But those who are weak and sick, I come not, amen. Those who are weak and sick, I come not to call the righteous ones to repentance, but the sinner. When he told me all I had to do was repent, sister. And stop looking what, what's behind me and start looking at what's ahead of me. That's all I had to do. That's all you got to do. And he says, I'll do the rest. You just got to step up. 
Let me take the burden, he said. But it's been part of me for years. He goes, he goes I know it has. But let me wrench it off you. Let me take it out of you. Let me deal with it. But you got to want to surrender it. If you're not wanting, willing to surrender it, then there's no, real, there's, there's, there's no sense coming to, to Christ. Unless you're willing to come all the way. I'm going to be real with you. Real with you. Amen. There's no... Amen. He ain't going to wash half your body and leave the other half dirty. Come on. What man or woman goes into the shower and only washes half their head and not the other half? And then your, your hair's all shiny on this side. Yeah, this side, I kind of just let it be today. <laughs> Amen. One armpit smells good. The other one smells terrible. One half of your body's all nice and the other half's all dirty. He doesn't deal with that. Amen. I'm sorry, church. He, he doesn't deal with the lukewarm. It, it, can't, it gets him sick. It, it, he spews him out of his mouth, the Bible says. Amen. He, he, he says a double-minded man, amen, amen, is a, is a man that is so unfaithful. He's as the waves of the wind being tossed to and fro. You can't, you can't deal with this kind of person. But those who seek uh, uh, the righteousness of Christ, those who are sick and tired and tired of being sick, those one God can deal with, those are the ones that God pulls out of the grave and resurrects back to life. Right? Amen. Those are the ones he breathes into because they've already been emptied out of everything else. Have you been poured out today? Have you turned off CBS, as Pastor said? Have you turned off the internet, as Pastor said? We could come to a Holy Ghost filled meeting and go back out there and turn on NFL football, get filled with all the nonsense of the world, watch all the commercials, amen, and expect to come back tonight, amen, being touched again by God. Amen. We got to be a separated people. Amen. I'm tired of seeing so many people halfway in the world and halfway out. Amen. Thinking they're on their way to heaven. Either you're in or you're not. Come on. When it's cold outside like it was last night, the wind was blowing, brother. I could stand in my back porch and I could put one leg out on my patio and the other one inside and I could shut it like that. Would, would, would that, would half my body be warm? Eventually it's all going to get hindered by the cold. Because the cold's going to take over. You know how it gets when you get that chill. Come on. You can't really shake it off. Come on. Your nose starts running. Amen. You start, achoo. Amen. You could feel it down your spine. It like creeped in. Not so much for you younger guys, but when you get a little older. Amen. You could feel when the sickness is settling in. I think I'm getting sick. Come on. We also notice when we're getting far from God. When we're far from God, we can't give out the gospel as those who are on fire for him can. Come on. Those who are on fire. Wow. We look up to him. Wow, man. One of these days I could be. And you can. One of these days I want to be crazy like that preacher. Oh, yes, he can. I used to look at Chris Clock when I was in the home, sister. And I used to say, man. Man, I wish I had like just his energy. Amen. And God says, well, you, you do. Just let me have all of you. Come on. Let me have all of you. But it's hard, Lord. I still have a wife that I got to give my half to. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We right away find excuses. We right away find excuses. Come on. And now we'll keep our mouths shut to profess the gospel of Christ. Come on. You want to see real people moving the gospel around this world? They're hungry and thirsty people for Christ. There are people that have had a real relationship with Him. There are people that go into that secret place where nobody is all, all around. They shut everything off. They shut their cell phone, their television, their internet. They shut everything. Their children, they duct tape their mouth. And they go into that secret place. 
whether it's for 15 minutes or 15 hours, they shut themselves in with the Lord and they wait for God. They wait for Him. They're not in there looking at the Timex, Timex. Amen. They wait for Him. They don't care how long it might take. Amen. Yes, I got to be at work at so and so. So you better hurry up, God, because I'm in here uh, waiting for you. And He'll walk in. Amen. He'll walk in. Yeah, not on your time. He'll walk in. And I love the way He walks in. You always feel His footsteps. No. You can always feel his footsteps. Not so much on the carpet or in that creak of the floor. Eerie. Amen. But you can always feel his footsteps in here. As he gets closer and he gets closer and then all of a sudden he gently lays his hand on you. Just like that baby kicking inside of you. You know he's there. You know he's there. No doubt. You're making bubbles in your panza. You know he's there. That's how Christ comes in. And he'll touch us. Just enough to satisfy you. Just enough to rely on the gospel. Even the most wicked of sinners, brother, he'll put around their sh his shoulders and rejoice. Tell all the people, look, this man was lost. He was tormented. He was bound with sickness and disease and sin. But now he's been saved. He's been saved. And he puts you on his shoulders. And he'll glorify you and magnify you in his stance. He's one of mine. She's one of mine. What a beautiful thing, huh? He'll parade you around town. Yeah, he will. People will know, amen. Oh, did you hear about Sasha, man? She's all, she was all jacked. Look at her. Come on. Did you hear about Edward, man? He was all toasted, man. Now look at him. I'm serious. Did you hear about that crazy family? Oh, the ones that shoot their guns. Yeah, look at them. They're all good in church. Hey, Amen. They're having an experience with Christ. They're meeting their maker on a daily basis. Hey, Amen. They're not worshiping the creature. They're worshiping the creator. They're no longer worshiping that TV show. They're worshiping God. They become unashamed. They become living testimonies. They, 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 they live it. You don't have to be, be, amen, today I'm living Christ. It's when you get up. It's when you go to sleep. It's when you're at school. When you're away from school. It's when you're by yourself. And no one else is around. Hey, mama and daddy, wifey and husband are gone. It's when nobody else is around. But you know your maker is. You know he is. You know he'll still sit with you when you call upon him. Yeah, you could get beat up. You could get scratched up as a Christian. Amen. But we need the presence of God living in us. These are the last days that we're living in church. This is the last hour. Come on. And he's looking for those who are be sold out to him. He's looking to those who will represent him. He's looking for a remnant. Come on. He's looking for a remnant that's on fire for him. Amen. He doesn't want a watered down church. He wants a real church. He wants somebody who's adoring themselves for his coming back. Those who are looking to that eastern sky and waiting and waiting and waiting. They have an ear. They're not hardening their hearts, brother, as they did in the days of provocation in the wilderness. Amen. They're not rebellious. Amen. Some of us get rebellious. And some of us harden our hearts. Amen. He ain't answering my prayer. He ain't doing nothing. Yeah, look at me. Amen. Well, good for you. Get on your knees. Start seeking him. Start fasting. Start crying out. Come on. He hasn't forgotten about you. He's just trying you. Job never gave up. Come on. He lost everything. Even his children. And his wife walks up to him, hey, big guy. 
as he's smothered and boils. And those things hurt. You get one, one's good enough. All full of pus right there. No. And you tell your best friend to squeeze it. I'm not just squeeze it. <laughs> Imagine having them all over your body. And you're scraping them with broken pottery or whatever, just kind of to ease the uh, that rash that never goes away. That just, uh, come on. And he's sitting there, and his beloved wife comes up to him, tells him, hey, why don't you just renounce your God and die? But he wasn't ashamed. Even in his condition. He said, oh, no, woman, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh-uh, I will not renounce him because he's the only one that's going to get me through this. Come on, he's the only one that gets us through this. Come on, the Apostle Paul on that shipwreck, amen. He's seen that waves are coming and everybody's bailing ship, amen. Everybody wants to bail ship, but he got a word from the angel, amen. The angel told him, nobody's going to leave. Let no one leave. You steadfast right here on this ship and watch my glory come. Come on, watch none be, be, be put to death, but I'll be saved. There was unbelievers on that ship and they were still able to live through the storm. But he was not ashamed. He could have kept that all to himself. Be a good little Christian boy. No, it's time we open up our mouths. It's time we get loud. Come on, church. It's time we get loud. Amen. Amen. He came to save us. He came to save those out there. It seems like immediately once we get washed and we go through the car wash, shh, and get waxed and everything. Woo. Amen. Our teeth are white. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We get our health back. We're no longer 110 pounds. Amen. We're trying to walk all good because, amen, God feeds us really well. Amen. We, we, we start feeling good about ourselves because he's taking care of us. Yes. Then all of a sudden we think it's all just church. Come on. He told, he told Joshua, hey. Come here. You got to circumcise every one of these men. <gasps> really? Yeah. They can't go into the promised land that way. You got to make sure they're separated onto me. He said, orale, come here. <laughs> Owie. But he gave them time to heal. He gave them time to heal. If you've been in the church house and you're just sitting here, praise God, woo, chewing your bubble gum, amen, for years, I think your healing has already passed. I think it's time to take it and demonstrate your faith in the streets of Bryan, Colorado. Come on. Get behind your pastors here. Lift up their hands in the battle. Come on. We need to see more errands and more errands in the church house, amen, instead of... Yeah. Hey! I see it at Pastor Ray's church. And everybody, oh, Pastor, I'll be with you till the hubcaps fall off. Oh, they already fell off over there on the bumpy road. Amen. I already lost them years ago. I never made that, that promise to my pastor. I'll be here forever, Pastor, because I don't know. But I'll be there today. Well, I'm here today, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I'll be there tomorrow. I know that much. But if Christ is living in me, I'm going to be where God has me. Unashamed, brother. Remember what he died for you? Remember when we were stained? Just close your eyes right now and just remember that. Right now. Holy Spirit. Take us back to that moment when you saved us. I'm serious. Remember where he picked you up from? Remember how he had to deal with you for years and still some of you are being dealt with? Man. Sister, he pulled me out of nonsense. He pulled me directly out of darkness. Somebody stood up and prayed for me. 
Somebody interceded for me, brother. I don't know if I shared this with you, but I'm going to share it with you now. I was ministering in my hometown. And there was this woman there. I didn't know who she was. I wouldn't have recognized her anyways. But she was sitting there after the altar call, after the meeting. She came down directly to where I was, and she said, I had to see it to believe it. And I go, excuse me? She goes, yeah, you. And I go, me? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> you guys are a trip. Amen. <clears throat> and I go, what do you mean? And she goes, she goes, that night that they took you into the ER, when you had that accident, when they took your mom's life, she says, you were hysterical. Not even, not even the doctors. You were cussing them out. You were, you were about to hit them. You were out of control. And she goes, do you rem I don't remember. Amen. And if I do, I plead the fifth. But you know what I mean? She goes, tell me all of this. And she goes, I was working at the registry right across. I didn't know who you were, but I heard what had happened. I heard how you rear-ended your mother and your stepdad from behind and, and, it, and it killed your mom instantly. It broke her neck and she died. And, and, and now they're bringing you into this hospital and here's your brothers, here's your sister, here's your stepfather and they're all against you. She said, but something awoken in my heart. She said, God began to speak to me. The Holy Ghost began to ignite inside of me, she said, to pray for you. I was a man headed to hell, brother. With all that I had on. But she said, I had to pray for you. And she said, I prayed for you five years. From that time on, for five years. Then my husband got out of prison, she said. Then we backslid. And she says, I've been in the Lord for, for three years. From this time she was talking to me. She goes, and when I heard that you're going to be ministering at this little church in Cuesta, New Mexico, in your hometown, I had to come to see it to believe it. And she says, now I believe it. And I told her, hey, woman, see what your prayers have done. See what your prayers have done for being unashamed of the gospel and the power and the presence of God. That's what it does. It brings a wretched man like you and I, brother, into that mercy seat. It brings a man bound with sin, full of sin, doused in sin, to the mercy seat. It brings a woman, amen, out of prostitution, out of adultery, out of a hideous life, to the mercy seat. It brings the sinner, the most wicked one, to the mercy seat. That's the power of God. That's the presence of God. But it takes those who want it. I want it more. I'm not satisfied with just a little bit. When I told the Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit, but I don't want a little taster. I don't want a little teaser. I don't want it. I want the, the full thing. Come on. Amen. Amen. It's just a little piece of pie. Come on. I'm not on a diet. I don't. Do. Come on. I need more than that, bro. Come on. No, I'm not talking about an appetizer, God. I want the whole thing. I want to know you beyond my imagination. I want to know your great mysteries. I want to know the call you have in my life. I want to walk the call you have in my life. I don't want to be ashamed of this gospel. And he gave it to me. And he still gives me more. He still gives me more. Come on. Amen. You all alive. Amen. You all hot. I'm sweating already. Come on. That's a good heater you got, brother. Amen. <laughs> and he never, knocked, he never walked away from the wicked sinner. That's who Jesus was always around. I'm not saying you go sit at the pub bar, amen, at Frank's liquor store and wait for him. You know what I mean? But it's the sinner that needs to come to Christ. And we are his representatives, brother. 
We are his ambassadors, brother. We're the ones who hold up the banner of the gospel. Come on. Bear that cross daily. Amen. And deny yourself and you will become unashamed of the gospel and the power behind it in the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's all stand. I want to end with that, man. Check this out. He says, they told him, this man receives sinners. This man receives sinners. Look around you. We all are. We all were or we all are. Not any day. There's, there's, there's not a week that goes by without me failing. Come on. Whether in thought, voice, eye, whatever. Come on. No one's perfect here. But if we have the Holy Ghost and we allow Him to do the work inside of us, He's out to see us made holy. I don't know what God's dealing with you today. But some of you God is dealing with. It's going to get good. You got to hang on. You got to hang on. And ask no one to leave right now. I want you lady, you young lady, you, come here. Come here. And you come expecting. You come expecting. Not a child, but yeah, you already got one. <laughs> Man, I'm a joker. Yeesh, stop it, Lord. He's expecting. I can never keep it serious, man. God always has me going wild. Amen. But let God deal with you. Let him deal with your house. With your home. With you. Man. Heavenly Father. I ask you to bless this life, Lord God. A life with a life, Lord God. A wife of a husband, Lord Jesus. Father, deal with our homes, Lord God. Deal with everything within our walls, Lord Jesus. Father, you have your way, Father. You have your way, Lord God. You have your way. Come here, honey. Come here, Ron. You have your way, Lord. Just touch your little arms right there. Touch her. In the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit take over. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Let the Holy Ghost take over. I'm going to ask this young man to come here. You come here, brother. Just lift your hands right here. Surrender it to the Lord. Lift them nice and high, brother. In the name of Jesus. 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 We let it all go. We let it all go. We let it all go. In the name of the Lord. You picked us, Lord. You chose us as your own, Father. <laughs> you chose us, Lord. Cry out to him, brother. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. Here we are, Lord. Here we are, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord God. Jesus, forgive us of all sin, Lord God. Forgive us of, Father, whatever it might be, Lord God. We ask you into our heart. A deeper intimacy. A deeper walk. A washing, a cleansing. In the name of the Lord. 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 Are you his parents? Are you his parents? Come on down. Come on down, mom and dad. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, Lord. 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 Oh,
Bashi Alabasa Yalabasa Father Lord God, the battle is hard, Father, but it is yours. It is yours. It is yours. It is yours. The battle is yours, Lord God. Oh, we give it all into your hands, Lord God. We give it all to you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in this Father, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. Uphold his hands, Lord God.